we are we have a couple of questions in the chat um, that came up. So if, um, we're a couple minutes behind. Um, so we're going to move on to the next speaker. But if you could be so kind as to respond in the chat, I think yeah. the attendees would greatly appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Dr. Sung Moon Song, a postdoctoral fellow from Stanford University. Okay, let me share my screen here. You can all see the slide and hear me, yes? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, thank you all for coming and uh, thank you Tom and Hao for organizing the workshop and the invitation. Uh, today, I will talk about my research toward predictive neuromechanical simulation for rehabilitation. Um, I will first briefly introduce my neuromechanical simulation models of human locomotion, then present two of my recent projects uh, that, that I think are in the essential directions to further advance new mechanical simulations. Um, my long-term mission is to understand human movement and apply it to improve physical performance. Understanding movement is a, a grand challenge that has been studied by biologists over a century. And I am fascinated by the science of motor control and biomechanics and I'm passionate about using it to improve rehabilitation treatment. As the main approach, I use neuromechanical simulations. I develop computational models of human locomotion control, simulate them in plausible contexts, and analyze the resulting behaviors. The video shows our human walking model, and one way to analyze its behavior is by comparing the muscle activations the model produces, the black lines, to those measured during human walking, the gray lines. Um, and I will not go into the details of our model in this talk, but list a few things the model can do. First of all, we propose a con control model that primarily consists of simple reflex circuits. And when the control parameters are optimized for metabolic energy or muscle fatigue, uh, it generates human-like walking. As human gait data is not used in the process uh, of setting the control parameters, we can say that the model uh, predicts normal human walking. And when we optimize the control parameters in different environments or with different cost functions, the model generates uh, diverse locomotion behaviors. So this model demonstrated that it is possible to generate a wide range of locomotion behaviors with simple reflexes. In a follow-up study, we further evaluated the model's plausibility by investigating its reactions to a range of unexpe unexpected disturbances. And 80% um, of the response trends matched with those of human responses reported in the literature. We also were able to explain many features of elderly gait by applying age-related physiological changes to the model. Uh, for instance, we showed that the elderly simulation model prefers to walk slower in order to reduce muscle fatigue, and also identified the physiological changes that causes uh, this shift in fatigue optimal speed. Uh, so given that we have a neuromechanical neuro model that can produce many human-like locomotion behaviors, uh, what limits us from using it to develop rehab rehabilitation treatment? Actually, we can simply implement an exoskeleton in simulation, for instance, and we optimize the control model to see how it adapts to the assistive, assistive device. However, there is no guarantee that such model prediction will match actual human adaptation. Uh, therefore, to enhance the reliability of the model prediction, we inevitably should iterate between developing models and validating them with human experiments. Our current models are also limited in that its design is not automatized. Uh, we researchers handcrafted the model by selecting physiologically plausible circuits that we thought would be uh, would produce desirable functions for leg locomotion. Uh, however, it may be difficult to take such approach for more complex motion strategies and using more advanced machine learning techniques such as deep reinforcement learning uh, may be useful in this regard. Here, I will present one gait experimental study uh, where we used an ankle exoskeleton to enhance walking speed 
and another project where we try to facilitate the use of deep reinforcement learning in studying human motor control. In the first project, we used what our lab called exoskeleton emulators uh, that has powerful off-board motors and computers, allowing us to rapidly test new design and control ideas. Ideally, one would want to reach a target location safely with minimum effort and in a minimum amount of time. While there are different performance measures, uh, here we focused on reducing time. Uh, this can be especially helpful to people who walk slow due to age or gait pathology. The central question of this project is, can we increase prefer walking speed with ankle exoskeletons? Uh, to investigate this question, we used human in the loop optimization. While a participant uh, walks with a set of exoskeleton controllers, the algorithm estimates the resulting performances you want to change, then feed that information to a numeric optimizer, which outputs a set of new controllers that will, will be evaluated next. Through iterating this process, the optimizer tries to find a controller that maximizes the target performance. Our lab has successfully used human in optimization in reducing metabolic energy consumption during walking and running. And in this project, we aim to increase preferred walking speed. So how do we measure preferred walking speed? Uh, we simply measure participants' self-selected walking speeds on a self-paced treadmill. To this end, we developed a self-pacing controller that matches subject walking speed estimated from ground reaction forces measured in an instrumented treadmill. We verified with 10 healthy subjects in normal shoes that when instructed uh, to walk at a comfortable speed, walking speed on the self-paced treadmill correlate very well with overground walking speed. Our self-pacing code for a vertex treadmill is shared online, so feel free to try it on a forced instrument treadmill. Uh, as we can measure prefer walking speed now, we are ready to use human in the loop optimization to increase walking speed. During the two days of 72 minute long human in the loop optimization session, uh, subjects walked in an ankle exoskeleton emulator on a self-paced treadmill and were instructed to walk at their comfortable speed. And the optimizer searched for a setting that makes the subject to walk faster by tuning the four control parameters that define the assistance torque pattern. During the validation session, we measured walking speed as well as metabolic energy consumption while subjects uh, walked at their comfortable speeds in five different conditions, which I will talk about soon. Um, as we had little idea on what to expect at the beginning of this project, I'm very excited to share how walking speed changed. When walking with torque assistance optimized for faster speed, walking speed increased by 42% compared to walking in normal shoes. All subjects walked faster with changes in the range of 6 to 91%, and four of the subjects walked at maximum treadmill speeds that were set based on the subject's leg length, which were faster than 2.0 meters per second. It was also clear that assistant type has a strong effect on walking speed. General torque was a torque pattern we found in a previous study that saves metabolic energy consumption during walking at normal speed. And even though the torque was found on a treadmill set at 1.25 meters per second, when subjects were free to choose their speed, they walked faster on average at 1.55 meters per second. Sham torque had the same peak torque with general torque, but peak torque occurs at a different timing of the gait cycle. As subjects walked much slowly with sham torque, it clearly shows that not only the torque amplitude, but also timing critically affects walking speed. Uh, we also measured metabolic energy consumption during the validation sessions and calculated the cost of transport, which is energy consumption per travel distance. The cost of transport varied a lot across subjects when walking with torque optimized for speed. Uh, this suggests that only optimizing for one performance measure may not result in gait assistance that will be useful in the real world. Um, here comes some video 
videos of subjects walking during the validation sessions. In all the videos, subjects are walking at their preferred speed on a self-paced treadmill. Uh, first, this subject walked at 1.2 meter per second in normal shoes. And with Torg optimized for speed, he walked at maximum treadmill speed, which was about 2.1 meter per second. And the cost of transport was 20% lower than that in normal shoes. In the, on the other hand, this subject also walked at maximum treadmill speed, but consumed much more energy. And I find it fascinating that we can find various toy patterns that induce subjects to walk very fast, but in different manners. Um, in this project, we show that it is possible uh, and we know how to increase preferred walking speed with ankle exoskeletons. In addition, the large variation in metabolic energy consumption suggests that only optimizing for speed may result in assistance that are not so helpful. And other observations in the study suggest how we could improve human delu optimization to find uh, practical toll assistance. Uh, before I joined my current lab at Stanford, our lab has proposed and successfully used two key approaches in developing and testing exoskeleton assistance. Um, the first is the exoskeleton emulator, which has powerful uh, motors, sensors, and computers that allow us to rapidly test new design and control ideas. The second is human in the loop optimization that automatizes the process of customizing exoskeleton characteristics characteristics and training users to better walk with exoskeletons. But despite these advancements, still a lot of time and resources are necessary to test even one hypothesis. And if neuromechanical simulation advances to produce uh, reliable predictions, it could be used as a testbed to filter out promising hypotheses or exoskeleton controllers that can be further verified through human experiments. Um, I'm currently pursuing this direction as part of my NIH K99 award. Uh, the project is at an early stage uh, where I investigated metabolic energy consumption of walking with unilateral and bilateral ankle exoskeletons with our original uh, reflex-based control model. Uh, and later in the project, I plan to combine more advanced machine learning techniques into the simulation framework to produce predictions for more complex scenarios. Um, and here, I want to introduce a competition we have, we have been organizing, which attracted mostly machine learning experts to apply deep reinforcement learning techniques to control human musculoskeletal models. Um, in the most recent uh, competition in 2019, the task was to control a 3D musculoskeletal human model to efficiently follow the lossy commands. While participants were free to develop uh, any kind of controllers. Most of them use deep reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is a machine learning paradigm that designs an agent that takes a reward and observation from the environment as input and trains a policy that outputs an action to achieve high cumulative rewards. Deep reinforcement learning is when you use a deep neural network as a policy and the recent breakthroughs in deep learning made possible to train deep neural networks for high dimensional inputs and outputs that are applicable to control human musculoskeletal models. We, the organizers, developed and provided the simulation environment, OpenSimRL, that includes the musculoskeletal model, uh, reward, and observation, and the participants developed and submitted their policies. The competition ran for about six months, about, uh, and about 300 teams participated and submitted about uh, 1,500 solutions and five papers. The top three teams succeeded in following target velocities, and all of them adapted state-of-art deep reinforcement learning techniques. The video shows the solution from by the research that won the competition. They found that it is easier to train a controller for fast running. Um, first for fast running, then gradually train for slower speeds and then for walking. So through this so-called curriculum learning, they eventually trained a walking controller that can follow target velocities.
Uh, the controller could produce rapid turning motions that has not been demonstrated in such new mechanical simulations be before. Um, we are eager to continue this competition and contribute to bridge neuroscience, biomechanics, robotics, and machine learning to model human motor control. Um, as we already have a large participation from the machine learning community, we are preparing tutorials and workshops to attract more biomechanics and motor control researchers in the next few years. We are working on a new simulation environment that will be suitable to train more dynamic movements and long-term motion strategies with the goal to organize Learn to Move Chase Tech next year that benchmarks the World Chase Tech competition. Um, to sum up, predictive neuromechanical simulations uh, could change the way we design rehabilitation treatment and develop wearable devices. Um, and along the theme, of this workshop, it could be used to continuously as, assess the use of wearable devices in the community. Um, and I'll be happy to discuss more about that. Uh, to further advance such predictive simulations, iteration between developing simulation frameworks and validating them with human experiments are essential. I presented my exper recent experimental study using human in the loop optimization where we de demonstrated that it is possible to substantially enhance self-selected walking speed. Another important direction is to combine more advanced machine learning techniques uh, in developing neuromechanical models. And if you're interested in such direction, I invite you to participate in the Learn to Move competitions we organize. Um, I want to acknowledge the co-authors of the presented work, as well as the sponsors who funded my research and the competition. Thank you for listening and I'll be happy to answer questions uh, maybe now or later. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have